All right, so now we can see what the demo is like. All right, so far as I look at it, I mean, it's okay. Not really seeing a whole lot here in terms of, and I'll try to open up my eyes so, so you guys can see as well. Don't know how bright to make this. I think about maybe there. <clears throat> now on the phone, it looks incredible. Like I wish it actually looked like that because the colors are definitely a lot more juiced up and that's just not what it looks like in real life on my end. So yeah, and now it's like overexposing everything. So I've got to lower down the ISO a little bit more because it's just, you know, it's clipping too much. But I wanted to get this video out and show you guys what we're dealing with here. Um, as far as contrast and clarity, I am seeing a good amount of contrast and clarity, but that's what these 4K demos are kind of meant to do. Okay, so we've got what looks to be like a TikToker dancing or whatever. Now, I will say, based off the motion that I'm seeing so far, I'm actually kind of impressed a little bit. It seems like Samsung has taken motion a little seriously because that little movement that that girl was doing just then was a lot smoother than I saw on the QN90A when they were moving things across the screen. So the first glimmer of hope, perhaps. I am optimistic. We'll see how that goes. Um, I don't see any blooming here on the Neo QLED sign. So yeah, I think so far, I mean, obviously I just got it out of the box, set it up and all that good noise, but I think so far so good, I guess. I haven't seen any obvious red flags, right? Like I'm not noticing like oh man, this looks like terrible or it looks absolutely horrible right now. But again, we are only on the retail mode, the demo content. So we're going to have to put it through its paces and all that stuff. A few moments later. What are the odds? I'm, I'm just going to ask that question right now. What are the odds that on this exact image, I had an issue with the Samsung QN90A last year? And this year, the same amount of blooming is there. They have fixed literally nothing. They talk about this quantum matrix technology. They talk about all these changes. Bro, bro, bro. Look at that. Now, why this is such a big deal, why this level of blooming is picking up on camera right now. Hold on, let me let me get back so I can just lock the focus so it starts stops messing up. Bro, look at that level of blooming that they got going on right now. Bro, it's ridiculous. Look at all that. You know, people were like trying to cap last year and say, oh, it's because, uh, you know, whatever. You, you're... You're at an angle. You're taking it at an angle. I don't care what angle you look at this thing. I'm sitting dead center. This thing is blooming like crazy. Like crazy. And again, you guys see the local dimming. This is on high right now, right? It, it doesn't matter what I select. I go to low, you still see glowing. You, you know? It, it doesn't matter what you do. Now there's like gray haze all the way over here. I have to open up my ISO a little bit more so you can see it. But dude, like th this is this is not... A flagship experience if we're talking about black levels and, and and again their their claim to fame is basically predicated on this this technology the best looking mode right now is standard and you still see glowing around each orb why this is a big deal is because that's not supposed to happen to this degree when you have this many zones clustered together nice and tight right and I mean when you go to high forget about it it lights up like the 4th of July so <laughs> bro I don't know what to do. I mean, what, what do you say to this? Like, I've been saying it for years, and I'll say it again. When you get to these TV manufacturers that like to market really well, and you get to these YouTubers that are just going to damage control for crap like this, look at that. You can't tell me you don't see that. There's damage control happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like I was telling y'all on my live stream, I was seeing people like be the installer say it's nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. Retail unit, bro. Nearly nearly perfect. Not even close, my guy. And this is this is with ambient light in my environment, bro. We can zoom out a little bit and you can see I'm not doing anything. This is ambient light right now. This is this is in a well-lit room. Imagine when the lights go off. You see this much blooming in a well-lit room. This is absolute horse shit. Like, oh my god. How did they even pass this through quality control? As I go through the menus, there's definitely something in the so-called expert picture settings here, just the regular picture menu that really got on my nerves a little bit. And the thing is like, there are no new picture modes. You just have dynamic standard movie filmmaker mode and that's literally it. Um, that's pretty trash. I think that's probably the least I've probably seen on any 
major brand television. Like you only get four modes. That's the best you got, Samsung. Now, of course, once calibration is complete, then you get calibration day and night. But that would require that you either hire a professional calibrator or at the very least enable it through the secret menu, which I'll go through my codes again and verify if it still works or if I have to go through new service codes. But you shouldn't have to go through service menus to get a separate preset for calibration day and night. Should already be there. First problem that I'm seeing with this television that I don't like. Um, again, the other thing is that it's just the same kind of uh, user interface. So this menu has basically been on Samsung's TVs for, God, what are we going on now? I mean, shit, they really like kind of stuck with this particular design back in like 2016 and have been running with it ever since like the KS8000 series. They changed the color here and there, but it's virtually the same thing. And I, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it. Now, what I like to do, because I absolutely hate the blue that they do, I go down to the accessibility tab, and then I go down to where you can see, uh, where is it, high contrast, and I just enable it, uh, and that makes it black. So that's what I do, because I just hate the blue, it's just not for me. And this makes it super easy to see as well, so it's totally like a thing I like to do, but again, at your leisure, I guess. But another thing that I kind of wanted to point out is like when you go under the picture clarity options, this is their picture processing, you basically only have auto, off, or custom. And it's really annoying because you should have more than those presets. I mean, for crying out loud, Samsung, this is getting really ridiculously annoying at this point. If, if they botch it under custom or if they botch it under auto, you basically have to disable the feature. That really is an under, you know, an undersight, I guess. Uh, miss opportunity to say the least. So then, of course, the LED clear motion is trash. Enabling it literally starts flickering, and it's very visible to the human eye. So you already can scratch that off. You can't use the black frame insertion unless you're, like, not even remotely close to being sensitive to flickering screens. Okay, so then, of course, you look at your noise reduction. All you can do is turn it on auto. There's not low, medium, or high. Like, this is already, like, not offering enough. And that for me is really irritating. Another thing that I kind of wanted to draw your attention to is like just while I'm sitting here hovering in the menu and I'm just literally just sitting here, I'm noticing there's blooming and it's pretty substantial. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the uh, ISO just a little bit so you can kind of see there that the blooming is happening around here. We're going to do official blooming tests, but I did notice that there is some substantial blooming kind of going down there. Uh, so we'll leave it right about there. I mean, it's it's looking it's not looking great, right? Now, local dimming, you still have high, standard, and low, which is great. Low seems to act a lot more like uh, what we would want out of OLED and what we've seen from Samsung, where it's weird. Their lowest point gives you the deepest black levels, but you lose brightness, and the highest point gives you the most amount of brightness, but you lose black levels. It's stupid. I just don't understand that. High means high aggressive local dimming algorithms. Samsung is pretty much doing the opposite day kind of mentality with this, and it's very strange. Um, again, looking at this, high, medium, low, or high and low on contrast enhancer, there's no medium. Uh, as far as your color tone, you have basically cool, standard, and warm too. That's all you get. I mean, okay, I guess. As far as white balance, you have 2 and 20 point, nothing crazy there. As far as your gamma, you have access to 2.2 .2 and 1886. That's all you get. Okay, a little bit annoying. I would have liked to see 2.4 there. Um, and then we go into the shadow detail. You still have the shadow detail that goes up to plus, or plus 5 and then negative 5. So depending on how you want to go about making settings or whatever, that's what you can use. The thing that really upsets me the most, though, is this color space nonsense because... You're literally locked to BT709. You can't do anything. You set it to custom, you're still locked to BT709. See, when you go to custom, that should be the part where you get access to other things and you just don't have it. That's trash, right? So essentially, all you have is auto, native, and if you want to do custom and you want to sit there and play with their little RGB mixer here, it, you know, it's so stupid. It should be an HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance slider to adjust appropriately instead of me mixing RGB channels to try to create a color. It, it's it's a backwards way of doing things. I've been the only calibrator talking about this for years, and it still bugs me to this day because it, it could be more streamlined than this, and it's just not. It's more complicated for no real reason. So, yeah, that's just what Samsung's going with. 
Um, and then, of course, you look at the smart calibration and something that immediately bugs me is that they tell you that the calibration basically requires a Galaxy S uh, Note, a Z Flip, or a Z Fold. So basically, it's not going to work for any kind of phone, which is, again, backwards. I kind of knew this was going to happen, though. If you guys remember in my initial video, I was saying it seems like a good way to start selling those Galaxy phones. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing here. So I'm not surprised with that. But again, it's one of those things that you should note when we're talking about this TV. Other than that, it's basically the same layout and format that we've seen for years out of Samsung. And the more I look at this, the more I am seeing blooming. And I'm actually seeing a grid style blooming around the, the little menu here. I'm going to open up my ISO so you can see this. Don't know how well you'll see it. Okay. But essentially, there's a little grid around here. It's like a, it goes around in like a checkerboard fashion here. Just look at that. Look at, at the top here. You can see like a little square right in this little area here of local dimming. And if it's anything like what I'm thinking, this might actually have a problem like the TCL Q825 from a few years ago where it had, uh, you could see every little individual zone. That's going to be some bullshit if that's the case, but I will test this at nauseum to see what goes on with this, but so far I am not impressed.